I spent about 20 years as the president and CEO of a small research-based pharmaceutical company. Took uh, about eight drugs through phase two and phase three, uh, through the regulatory process and commercialized them, antibiotics, dermatology, cardiovascular drugs, uh, those all prescription drugs. I spent then about uh, seven years as the president and CEO of a molecular diagnostic company uh, here in Toronto and we had built out an FDA approved manufacturing facility for building DNA tests. We developed a dozen genetic tests for a variety of diseases. For the last three years, uh, my partner and I had focused on acquiring the rights to some genetic patents for two diseases, for colorectal cancer and for age-related macular degeneration. And that's pretty much what we're focused on now is commercializing uh, those two DNA tests. The industry has been through a lot of flux. Uh, back in 2000, when the human genome was announced, there was a lot of money uh, to be focused on every opportunity uh, that, that would avail itself. But as the economies have shifted through the course of this past decade, what we see today are companies with limited resources that are trying to focus those resources on one or two products that they see as winners. We're a Canadian company uh, founded here and running here in Toronto. And the challenges for us here is that our market is not here. So even though the technology may come from here and the, you know, the intellectual property might come from, say, the University of Toronto or whatever, uh, in order to commercialize a technology, you really do need to focus on the United States and or Europe. As we identified that there was some really good research going on, for instance, in age-related macular degeneration. Great data was being generated. What we did was we looked at the uh, research that was going on internationally, who the key researchers were. We approached each of those researchers, we set up confidentiality agreements with them so that we could look at their data, look at the research, look at their draft manuscripts before they were published, see where the best uh, markers were, and then forge agreements with the researchers and the universities that they worked at to be able to access the best IP for that therapeutic or disease category. Because I had run a molecular diagnostic company before and had FDA approval on genetic tests, one of the few companies that had ever done that before, I kind of had a leg up. Even though I didn't have the money that maybe some of the other competitors that were looking for the same IP I was, I didn't have the same money they did. Um, they believed my business plan and that I would be able to take their technology and get it into the market much more quickly than, than most of my competitors. That was a very interesting experience for me. Uh, we built a genetic testing platform. So there was an instrument and there was a chemistry. And then we built a dozen tests by acquiring rights to the intellectual property for various genes that we would want to interrogate on that platform. And what I learned was the, the business model of building a platform, a mousetrap if you will, is only as good as it, you know, or as long as it takes the competitive company to build one that's faster, better, cheaper. So in this business, what I've done is I've focused on the genetic content because the genes in human beings never change. And so if there's a patent on that and it lasts for 20 years, then you've got a business model that lasts for 20 years. From a regulatory point of view, dealing with the FDA or Health Canada, make a phone call, book an appointment, and go and have a visit. Uh, what I've found is that they are unbelievably helpful. Uh, they're all just human beings, and they are intrigued to talk to you about what it is that you're trying to do. The FDA will help you with the design of any trials and studies that you want to do. Uh, they have processes in place to be able to map through the development of your technology. And if you don't do that up front, uh, then you're taking on a burden of risk uh, that really need not be there. I think the big thing in the future for molecular diagnostics is to see how the pharmaceutical industry and the diagnostic industry can come together on a union between using a genetic test that identifies a patient's biology which is matched to the biology of a drug that will either reduce side effects or improve the outcomes or the efficacy of a drug in a patient. And there are a lot of operational and regulatory issues between the diagnostic industry and the pharmaceutical industry that are not yet ironed out. And I think that the willingness is there from both sides, but it's going to take a full five years before we see a model or a business model that actually works well between the two.